Hey folks, how you doing? There's a lot of videos going on at the moment. I'm kind of multitasking about four or five different projects in the car at the same time. Uh, but today we're going to look in at the brakes here, try and get them rebuilt and get them fitted so we can get the four wheels put back in this car, get it rolling again. So start by breaking down the front calipers and I'm just soaking all the components there to see what condition they are when we clean them up. So you can see that the piston here is relatively good condition. Um, couple little shiny marks that's on it, uh, but it cleaned up well. Number two, clean up very, very well. Number three then, it's kind of like this one here where we had this cruddy layer down here. So I want to start cleaning it off. And so far, it's not looking that healthy. So I'm gonna keep working on it here to see if I can bring it back. If not, then I'll have to order a pair of these for one side. But uh, we can work ahead and see how much we can uh, clean and we can get in this. So here we go, this is the caliper uh, that I took off a couple of days ago, just spent maybe 15-20 minutes with a wire brush on the angle grinder, cleaned off all the crap and then had to pull out the two uh, pistons out of here, which uh, you've seen two are bad from the other, which I'm going to use in the other uh, calipers, and two are good, which I'll be using here, and these are the two pistons, this is the is it anti-squeak plate. And then this is the outer seal plus the little clip to hold it in. This is the inner seal that's going to be up against the piston. And these two pins then are for the brake pads to slide along with the two R clips. And that little guy came with the kit, which is, I presume, the end of here to block that off. I have yet to find out what these two guys are for. Two nice uh, brake pads then to go on top of that. And that'll give us a nice little refresh on this side. So I'm trying to keep my lovely paint job nice and clean, so I will be swapping gloves quite a lot for this. So the first thing I need to do is get the uh, seals popped in on the inside in here. The, the, it's the uh, kind of rectangular profiled uh, seal. So it pops on the inside. Just kind of walking it in as we go around. Then you want to kind of confirm that it's sitting in and not rotated, which in this case it is. Same story again with the other side. I can I just set it up into the slot from above and then start walking it around. And then move the finger around just to make sure it's all nice and flush. Oh, I brought brake fluid because that's the lubricant I want to have only in on the seals. That's what it was designed for, so I don't want to stray away from any other components in there. So I'm just going in now and we'll put a little bit on the seal on the inside. Nothing too crazy, just enough so that the rubber is and dry. Inside here. Next then is our cylinders, our pistons. Hopefully this goes in fairly okay. So let's put it on its end. So here. There we go. So I'll just slid in there now, all the way down. And we'll do the same with the far side. Oh, it's perfect. As I squeeze that through, uh, the air shot out the top here. So you know well, that's uh, making a nice seal. Okay, it's a little bit awkward to film this, but hopefully you get the idea, okay? So here's a seal. It's kind of uh, C-shaped with the C pointing downwards. So one end sits onto the shoulder of the piston and then one over this edge here, okay? So let's see if we can give us some more light. There we go. So I found that it's best concentrate on the inside first. And once it's on the inside end, you can pop it back on the outside and walk it all the way around. 
So as it sits there, it wants to kind of pop back off. So this ring here is the fella that's going to save the day. And the best way for that is to hook it from the back here. And because the spring has kind of got a, an upper and a lower fold here, get the lower one on first. And then come around and do that fold. It wasn't so bad. And this ring, it's very important that that is down as far as it can because it's kind of getting grip on that shoulder. And uh, that keeps the whole lot together. So now as that piston comes out, it'll just fold over on that and uh, stretch with it. Looks good. Okay, two uh, pistons are now in. Um, they're sealed up and clipped. Um, I think these fellas might be an internal seal here because I know that these two chambers are connected through uh, the um, brake feed here. So there's probably a channel each side and these seals are probably where you split it and it's just to basically seal up there. Um, I'm not, obviously not splitting these, so I'm gonna put these to one side, keep them for a later date just in case there is issues. Here is our pad and I'm just recycling the old plates from the back of the previous one. I am missing one, so I'll have to get creative there. And here's the other one. So we need to get these in here. These pins are fine, we clean them up, but I'm going to use some um, copper seize grease, uh, copper grease. Um, the reason for that is that there's a bit of temperature involved in here. We don't want ordinary grease in there, uh, spoiling everything. So I'm just gonna give a little bit of a spray on these, hopefully in a controlled manner. So that's it greased up. So this is gonna be a very little bit tough. We'll try and see how we get on. Okay, so I got my uh, R clips in and then realized that this guy is missing and I think he sits below with the bar going through these two holes here and that kind of holds it all together so I need to undo that pin slide that guy in and just fix him in there I think that's it uh, so I've got the pin in here now again I have to get my little R clip back down there uh, these two uh, springs sit on top there and push them in and keeps the whole lot kind of spread out um, looked at a few videos online and a lot of these springs seem to be missing on a lot of guys' assemblies, so uh, I think that's exactly how that works. It seems to be working good. It's in above the disc here. These two pins are pushing out the center of that. It sits proud on top, uh, just so that it kind of holds its position. And then it's just basically hooped around that pin there. So we just need to finalize this now by inserting our last or clip. So you can see the little hole down there. There you go. That is the uh, caliper assembled with a uh, brand new everything. And then don't forget the little cap for the uh, top of the bleed nipple. That is uh, tasty looking. Happy with that now. I'm going to keep it perfectly clean. Okay, as you can see, I've been busy here. Um, kind of treated all of this and painted it all up. And got inside here, had a few little bearings, all looks really, really good. So we're going to stick on the calipers now. Um, I think at a later date I will probably run coilovers on this, but for now I'm just doing a reassemble just to get it on the road. Uh, that'll be a future project. Alright, let's go get the calipers in. Very, very happy with that. You see a few other projects now. This will be in the next episode. Um, I have got my uh, SR20 gearbox 
and I have the bell housing all prepared now to get this assembled. I just have a bearing to go into that and uh, that'll be that sorted and then we'll know what length prop shaft we'll need for this whole assembly. So that means the R200 gearbox will be connected up from all sides. So uh, it's all kind of coming together. The main reason why I want to try and get this all fitted in then is so that I can get these arches rolled because I'm not going to flare. I'm going to be good to the car if I can. So get those arches rolled uh, so that when I have the wheel fitted here, it'll be out nice and flush. It'll be a, a good stance in the car. So the first thing I started off with was I gave this all a good wire brushing down. Uh, anything that kind of looked a little bit corroded, I uh, gave it a, a dose of uh, rust uh, inhibitor. And these are the last two parts now that I kind of forgot. So I'm going to give them a quick clean up and have them being painted in the background and what we're going to fire ahead with now is the uh, assembly process of the, uh, the the rear brake drum now. So this is the uh, left rear hub and uh, we're going to start now by uh, attaching all the components onto it and uh, get it fitted onto the car. So first of all we got our cylinder Nice and fresh. The ones actually I had were actually fine. There's no problems with them at all, but I just kind of like to refresh the whole lot of this so that I'm not worrying about it down along the line. So nice set of components, locked off here, and then they're already compressed in, so happy to go on. So I'm reusing the uh, two fixing nuts. Hold on now. There we go. You can see there's a little bit of rust on them. Um, I just give them a little wire brush off, and I'm gonna fix them on, and I'll probably give them a little touch of zinc spray and then paint on top of it, and it'll be kind of sprayed onto the, the hub itself. Um, I don't see any problems with that, it just basically means that I'm thinking that this is going to be here for a good 20 years. Okay, the next stage is the uh, uh, shoes themselves to go in. Um, we've got the springs and the uh, whole fixings all back here. Um, I think I found the best way to do this is actually assemble it here and then transfer it over. Uh, you kind of manipulate it around the, the uh, hub itself. So I'm gonna assemble it here first and then move it over here and just see if we can uh, wrangle it on, okay? Uh, as far as my memory serves me, um, there's a reason that these are trailed back from the edge if you can imagine now that the drum is spinning on the outside here, when this is kind of back from the edge, it's kind of trailing from the force. So uh, it kind of grabs it from behind. Or if you actually had it that way, the front would be digging in, in a sense. So uh, we're just going to match these to the rotation of the left-hand side hub, which uh, will be this way. Be. That way. I'll explain here now. So if you can imagine now the hub is spinning this way going forward for the majority of its life and this brake shoe is going to gra grab here but because it's away from the edge it's predominantly on the rear end of the uh, the shoe itself so it's going to kind of trail uh, the force of grip in a sense the same with this side over here that way you don't have any kind of the nose digging in first and the kind of having uh, inconsistency uh, in the brake uh, areas where it's uh, pressing in Okay, so this is the little ratchet mechanism for the uh, handbrake. I'm gonna put that probably in all the way. This is uh, a reverse tread. Righty loosey, lefty tighty. I'm gonna put that in all the way and then we can use the handbrake to um, feed it out to where it needs to go. Squish that in there. And then I think this little tab is out. That's the uh, springs in place, everything else now kind of gets put on on the hub itself so we'll go over and try and see if we can squeeze it onto the hub now. Okay, I'm sure there are definitely easier ways of doing that, but it works for me. So we'll go and we'll stick in the uh, 
clip next. So essentially you have sandwiched the spring with each of these fellas here. And this guy's gonna be fed up through the middle from the back. And when you put this down over, you want to rotate it and have it clipped in. And what that does then is that basically keeps that shoe uh, sitting back to the back. Now there's meant to be a little bit of a, a lubrication at the back wall of this between the pad and the, um, the cylinder drum itself. I don't have any at the moment. So I'm just gonna go ahead and assemble and I'll come back in and I'll just touch a little bit of that in later. So insert the pin from the hole in the back. So you can see there now that that was rotated so that the uh, the flat part of the end of the pin is now 90 degrees to the slot itself. So she's in there nice and snug. So that's in nice all the way around. Uh, so these are actually held back tight. They're sitting up here. They're in the drum slots down here. And that little adjuster is uh, connected down below. So when you press the handbrake, if I pull on the handbrake to spread it, you'll see because the handle is so far back, you can actually see turning the ratchet already. So it's already trying to spread out the uh, drums. That's pretty cool. So obviously I don't want to spread that out until the hub is on the assembly. Next thing I need to do, which I'm not looking forward to doing, is cleaning the hub. Here she is, full of rust. And you can even see where the brake pads were probably pressing against the drum for a while. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop out these two little plastic bungs here, and I'm just gonna wire brush the sh** with this and uh, get her up and going. Okay, so we got all the uh, crud off that uh, drum. Uh, looks a bit uh, fresher. It's not immaculate, but look, it's in behind the wheel. So it uh, should be fine. Now, I have since gone off and gotten some of this. It's a uh, Train 1 anti seize copper grease. And I'm gonna use this at the key contact points at the back of the uh, drum. Now, I'm using this sparingly. Okay, so before you spray this stuff, it's best to uh, pump a little bit out first because it kind of comes out with just the uh, solvent in the heat. Um, and then you have the copper on it's meant to be. So next, stick it on the hub. Yeah, like it love. Beautiful. So I just gotta put these on it just so it doesn't be falling off of me. 95% of this is gonna be hidden behind the wheel. So you're not too worried about anything in here. Out here it might be a little bit uh, visible, but I'm not too worried about that. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that there, but that is actually bent down and I wouldn't trust it. Um, it'd be kind of under, or under strain when it would be fitted to uh, the car. So I'm gonna order a new one of these. But I'm gonna actually carry on and use that on the um, on the uh, the axle. Uh, it's just so I can carry on assembling it. I can tap this out then after uh, when I get the new one delivered. And, but this is just allowed me to kind of get everything fitted up anyway. So let's crack on with that. So eagle-eyed viewers out there would have caught what I just did. Um, I had forgotten to put on the brake tube. Um, it basically brings it from the uh, cylinder at the top, as far as I can remember, down to the bottom, and then the flexi goes from there, then off. Now I have a flexi, and I have rod tube, and I have the connectors. So I need to start uh, just manufacturing this tube here. I would have used it, except for I kind of rounded off these fellas here a little bit when I was taking them off. They were just on that tight. And then that fella, as you can see there, is in bits. So I'm gonna manufacture a new tube now, and uh, we can fit that on while it's on the car. Uno.
fairly happy with that. So fairly happy with that. I just need to re-bend that guy back to where it was before. And uh, that is our tubing for the back of the left-hand side. Now, obviously, I was doing this by uh, freehand. Uh, I didn't have the bending tool. So the one thing I'm making sure that any time I do bend excessively, that it's not flattened out in any way at all. So these are all quite good. They're actually uh, pretty much uh, keeping the same radius. Uh, if you basically flatten it, you've kinked it, and it's no good. Okay, so um, we are fitted in, as you can see down there. Now we just need a bracket for here, and there'll be another one for down below here for the handbrake. Uh, they're just being painted at the moment, and uh, when I have them on, then I can go with the flexible. Let's leave that as in my face all day. When that's done then, I can get the little flexible from, let's say, there to over here. So the good thing though is that we actually have it up in position, so now we can turn our attention to the drive shafts and uh, see if these are actually gonna work for us. All right, guys, that is back and front done. Uh, obviously, we're just waiting on a few parts there to get the other calipers done, but that is the uh, rebuild in both of those uh, kits. So, uh, looking good. Uh, that's it for this week, guys. Um, I've actually been recording a few different videos at the same time, so there's a lot going on here. We've got a gearbox that's been completely uh, retrofitted to fit onto the L28. There's an L28 engine sitting right there, ready to be stripped down, and uh, I've managed to acquire an N42 um, head for this, so it's going to be uh, more capable of the uh, turbo. Speaking of turbo, this is the turbo that's going onto it. Um, went onto the guard's website and uh, specced the engine, the flow rates, and the whole lot, and this came up as uh, one that uh, was actually matched. It's fairly big, uh, so I uh, should be well able to pop out the power I'm looking on this anyway. And to handle that boost, we've got a nice little intercooler here. So it's all beginning to come together. And uh, there's another video coming up soon uh, with the drive shafts that are going to fit in here. Um, they disappeared for a while, so I've only just managed to track them down. Um, but we have to adapt the flanges on the back of the uh, stub axles in here. Uh, to take the CV joints, so they will be able to, for a lot more power. So, as you can see, there's a lot of videos coming on here, and I uh, hope to get them released now over the next couple of weeks. And guys, any likes or subscribes you can send my way, I'd appreciate it. We'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye.